Yo, what's up, my brother? What's up, my sister? This is your boy Oscar Ntege again with yet another amazing tutorial. In this particular tutorial, guys, I'm going to show you how they do professional portrait skin retouching without a step skipped. You should watch this video till the end because every minute, every second that you skip out, you miss out a lot of important information that would have helped you better your portrait. Uh, I did this particular image like almost a year back on her birthday and uh, they are really amazing pictures, lots of amazing pictures and yeah, her name is Janet. I'm going to share the link to her Instagram page down in the link so that you guys can go and follow her. Anyway, enough with the chit chat and the technique we are going to use to retouch this image is old frequency separation. We are going to combine two techniques. We are going to use frequency separation and we are going to use burning and dodging for this particular image. Now, this is how it's going to work. Frequency separation is just going to help us work on the skin tones and the like and burning and dodging is only just going to help us create more depth and dimension into this particular image. The same burning and dodging is also going to help us correct these these makeup errors. When you look at her nose highlight, it really you can see the demarcations of the makeup and all that stuff. So these are some certain things we are going to to correct and give her something that is a bit neat and more precise. Now, after this tutorial is done, you should watch out for the next tutorial because in the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to edit hair, how to edit all this and straighten all this out and make the hair pop. So make sure you turn on notification, subscribe, and of course, leave a comment below so that I get the motivation to post for you guys how to edit hair like the pros do it. Now, first things first, uh, you're going to come and duplicate this layer twice. That, just like that by dragging it there. So what we're going to do, we're going to name this, this particular layer. These are going to be the tones. And these are going to be the, the textures. Now, here is the technique. Now, with frequency separation, frequency separation, for those of you who don't know, is a skin retouching technique that is used by most of the pros to edit the such beauty portraits. Now, what it does, it helps you separate textures from the colors or the tones. These are the lower layer is the tones and these upper one, the upper layer is the texture layer. How does it do? How does it work? Now we are going to get the texture from this tonal layer and drive it all up there so that we have the textures on just this upper layer and the colors just on this layer now when i talk about the colors this the color of the skin the hues the browns the blacks those are colors the textures is how it is these the, the skin the skin texture these the the pores you know all these eyelashes and everything that is a bit that looks tactile is the texture we are talking about so we're going to subtract the texture from this layer and put it all in this particular layer and all the colors are going to remain in this layer. Let's dive into this. Now, you come here. Uh, this is where I need your attention, by the way, here. You come here and say, Filter, Gaussian Blur. Now, this is where most people mess up. I don't want you to mess up in this particular area because most people just cram steps and maybe cram digits and they forget, you know, that uh, how much blur you put here influences the final product. It affects the final photo. So this is how we do. So we, we I look at the whole general skin outlook and find the texture that I would really, really want to retain. So I love this texture. I want to maintain all these pores in the final product. So what I do, sorry, in the final photo. So what I do, I come and blur out 
all this until I see no more texture. I still see texture. I still see texture, you know, until the texture is no more just like that, you know. Guys, I don't want you to cram digits. I want you to understand how this technique works. Now, every the more texture you blur in this particular lower layer, the more you will retain in this upper layer. I would rephrase this. You know, every single texture that you blurred out here will resurface in this particular texture layer that if you blur out little, very little texture will resurface in the upper layer, you know. So, the more you blur, the more texture you will retain in the upper layer. I don't know, I don't know how much I should emphasize this. I'm seeing a lot of guys tagging me in pictures who just scrum digits and they turn out having pictures that really don't look nice at all because they watch tutorials skipping through them. You know, I hear even people telling me how I do long tutorials. Guys, this particular channel is not for advanced learners. This channel is for people who are starting retouching, people who want to learn retouching because I go into depth. I just want them to understand this is not a quick fix channel. There are many quick fix channels. You, It's okay. You can go and watch those quick fix channels. But this one is for you people who want to really learn and understand the basics of retouching and learning the right way of doing these things so that you don't produce bad pictures. Anyway, back to the editing. So we are going to say OK here. So the next thing we are going to do, we are going to come into this layer, the texture layer here, and we are going to come have it selected and say image. You say apply. Then you come here and say subtract. So we are we are remember we said we are going to subtract texture from this layer and transfer all the texture with blood from this layer and put it all in this upper layer. So you come here and say subtract. You come just right down here and you come select tones. Remember we are subtracting the to the, the textures from the tonal layer and putting them to the texture layer. So you select tones just like that. You know? See? That's how it is. So when you look, this gray thing you see here, this is all the texture was just subtracted off this layer. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to do, to say, oh, sorry, I'll have to go back to that. I'm just going to go back a few steps and I explain something that you might have missed out here. Uh, now here, we let's do this again. You come and say image, apply image. Remember, we are selecting this. You come here and select the tonal layer. You select the layer that is below the texture layer. Okay, do I make sense? You come and select. So keep the opacity at 100, keep this at 2, and keep this at 128. The offset is at 128 because this is where this is the number that is in between uh, where RGB meets, like where the red the red green and blue channel are all equal so that's why you see it is gray so you keep this at 128 keep the scale at 2 then with the rest just leave as is so and you just say okay so the next thing you're going to do just come here and change the blending mode to linear light just like that now when you look at this image your image is supposed to look exactly the same as your background layer. I'll just put this in, this in a group so that I just show you the before and after. You know, if that is the, bef without the before and after, like your image is supposed to look exactly the same. If at this stage your image has changed, you just have to go back and watch this video again so that you properly understand how, where you messed up. It is supposed to look the same yeah so the next thing we are going to do uh, uh, the next thing we are going to do we are going to now begin creating our 
skin okay so we're going to create what they call a, a black and white help layer so you just come here and say black and white just you come click here say black and white so what you do you come and crush the reds so that you bring all the pimples and the unnecessary blemishes on top this layer is just going to help us you know sort through all these pimples and the like so this this is just i'll just rename this to a black and white help I just call it that because this 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 is just a, a, a layer that is just going to help us guide us through on which things to remove and what blemishes to to keep so let us do this so I, I first work on the textures so I just come here and get my spot healing brush you can use a clone stamp you can use a patch tool let me use the clone stamp change this to no more then make sure it is current layer selected here just like that make sure it's current layer selected put the opacity and flow to 100 come select this layer and then we're going to just come and begin you know picking all these pimples out just like that Uh, I won't go through the basics of how the clone stomp works because there are many YouTube tutorials that really teach this stuff. So you just come and it's just that simple. You come and remove all these flyaway hairs from the face, and you know. Just like that. You know. You come and remove all these kinds of blemishes just like that. See how it is? Just like that. So we, we just remove all this, you know, I'm not going to take a lot of time really doing this, but you can always do it at your convenience, just removing all these white dots, you know, I'll just remove this, you make sure you remove it, you remove actually the black and white help layer so that you get to see what exactly you are doing. So that, I've finished working now on the, the texture layer, it's not really yet complete, if it was really uh, a project that I was going to deliver I usually take more time than this but for the sake of this tutorial you can do you know the perfect perfection at your convenience so the next thing you do is uh, you come here and get your lasso tool you put this at uh, you feather this like at 18 anywhere between 18 and 35 depending on the size of your image and how precise you want to be and then you come and select the tonal layer here and then you just come and select this part and then you come and say filter blur then we're going to begin blurring out this so that we get the tones you know just like so you don't take it overboard, you blur out until you see, you know, I think that that is enough for my test. So we come here, still, you just press now Control F, it depends on the Photoshop you're using. Uh, don't do it to such a level that the image gets flat, you know, you have to do it in such a way that now, for example, if you're doing a, a Gaussian line, such parts like these that have cheek points and a lot of highlights, I would recommend you come back to the filter here and give these ones their own Gaussian blurs. I don't know whether, you know, now if, if I use that, the same that 
it is see how I get a flat look and that is not what we are looking for so I just come and you know just come and you know create its own blur so that I don't I avoid getting that flattish common look that most people have in their images you know so you just for such sophisticated parts you come and go you go back and create a new Gaussian blur now same applies to the nose area because when when you look at this you know the, the nose contour really went overboard so I'm just going to select this nose contour and just besides it you know and uh, most makeup artists I don't know why they don't blend this nose contour so well it is most times visible in the images so you just come here and say blah and say Gaussian blah you know you the, the goal of this is now to just kill that line you know that is you know that is uh, on the side so that you know the makeup artist that this is hailed when they are seeing their own work you know the, the goal is to make the makeup better than the way it was so you just come and select these other parts just like this you know mm. like that you still come here and select that you still press ctrl f now also the other parts that need now the, let me tell you this when you're doing frequency separation every part that somehow protrudes off the face should have like its own Gaussian blur you know for example if I'm doing a forehead that normally protrudes out that has it gets a lot of light I usually give it a different Gaussian blur the nose highlight I give it a different Gaussian blur and I give a different Gaussian blur to the cheekbone area because light hits those particular areas separately now I also give this particular part a different Gaussian blur it takes a lot of time but when you look at the images in after they it's really you realize it's worth it because the images just look yummy and awesome so I just come here still on the jawline and just come and blah and again I say Gaussian blah just like that you know I just make sure I give these various things Gaussian blur. In the next tutorials again I will show you how to match skin colors. When you look at this skin, the the make the face where makeup is a lot and where her skin there is no makeup we don't really have. We have too much warmth in the upper parts of the skin and much more of a magenta like kind of feel in the lower part of the skin. So I'm going to show you in the upcoming tutorials how to match all these colors. All you have to do is subscribe, turn on notifications and make sure you don't miss a thing. So we are going to come and select this. We come again and say give it its own blur just like that. Perfect. Then still and then ocean black so we're going to go back here and again try to edit away this fly away hair you know you know these are oops yeah the reason as to why it is coming this way because here it is not it is selected as current and below layer so what you have to do you make sure when you're editing this you, it is current layer that is selected, you know. Oops, sorry about that. Um, again, so we make sure it's current layer selected. So we just come and remove all these. Just that, just simple, simple as that. It is really not rocket science removing these things and. You know, I won't take a lot of time on this. I just want us to now advance to doing the burning and dodging. You know, let us go back to this black and white help layer and see what else we can remove. Let's remove all these. You know, these, these veins in the eyes are also worth removing, you know. Look at this, all this to remove.
see all these white dots really these are these are small small things that most photographers leave out that make beauty shots look cheap depending on what you're using for the pictures for if you're using such pictures maybe for a salon or jewelry or something it is best you clean it to the max but if they're just portraits that somebody is going to keep in their album i would advise you at least to leave that kind of feel of the portrait being natural you know in a way depending on the usage you know it will determine how much you edit an image so the next thing we are going to do we are going to burn this particular image still this layer is going to help us in burning and dodging now everywhere you see the dark darkness and all that we are going to burn these areas you know and everywhere you see highlights we are going to you know dodge those highlights the goal of burning and dodging is creating more depth and dimension within the image because frequency separation tends to make images look flat so to remove that flattish look from an image you have to use what they call burning and dodging so we're going to burn and dodge not using the burn tool we're going to burn using the brush okay yes we are burning using the brush and because this one gives you more control so well, this is how we're going to do it so you come here and say curves so you come and say you reduce this down like that then uh, on top of this you just come and create a hue saturation layer just like that and you pump up the saturation just a little bit because you usually want to have uh, a lot of uh, the my shadows more saturated you know than the highlights so I just come and pump the saturation slightly up and then pin this layer on top of this so I want this particular effect to affect only the curves so what we are going to do we're going to come and rename this as burn yes and then we are going to press ctrl i so yeah so the next thing we're going to do we're going now to create the curve for dodge how do we do that you just come here and say curves and then you boost you know that and then we're going to name this dodge oops sorry okay forgive my keyboard dodge so the next thing we are going to do we're just going to create still a hue saturation layer on top of it just like that and this time we want the highlights to be a bit bland just don't take it over but just a little bit like that a 10 would be fine so we are going to pin that on the layer below it so in order for you to pin you just come and click over this so that the effect only this effect the hue saturation effect only affects the layer below it so what we're going to do you're going to press ctrl i to invert the layer so that we begin doing our action so i'm going to fast burn let us do this so you just zoom in an image don't overly zoom in because you may end up giving somebody wrinkles so you zoom in in such a way that you can see your image from far away you know so that you get a better feel a better perspective when you are looking at the particular image so then what you're going to do we're going to reduce you know the opacity and we reduce the flow just a little bit let us first keep it at 20 depending on really how fast you want the effect to happen you can put it as low as you want or as high as you want this is now a portion of test but i just want to build it up slowly by slowly so you just come here you make sure it is here it is white that is selected and if and then black there so we are going to just come and paint over just like like that just painting over so we're going to turn on our black and white help layer this one here so that we know where to burn just like that we're going to burn just a little bit here and we come again 
can find just there and again just there so still you you just like a painter really just adding on it's like finishing an artwork you know so i shall just get it off a little bit so that we see our progress before and after before and after so the other thing we're going to do we are, go we are going to burn just around the hairline you know because um th this helps the face have that kind of depth and dimension so i usually burn around the hairline just like that you know just all around the hairline to just keep the face a bit of dimension and you know and then the other part i also burn is this just below the chin now this helps to give the face more demarcation between you know the the neck and the face okay let's see before and after before and after i i don't i don't want the tutorial to be long but for the sake of your understanding um i'm just going to to do to do this again for your sake um just understanding the parts you 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 find yeah let me just create another empty layer here just to guide you i'll just get another color here just to show you the parts that you burn in, in this help layer now the cheekbone area i'll just open this you burn the cheekbone area to create dimension just like you burn that then you you burn around these areas and then around just think of yourself as uh, then around this area all these parts that I'm demarcating you burn a little bit of that area then just a little bit around there then around the edges of the hair you know all these parts that I'm marking with blue those are some of the parts you burn you can sometimes you burn around that area and then depending on the eyeshadow really they have used and uh, for emphasis sometimes you also burn around the eye area just like that you know now when you look at this image all these parts you burn because you're trying to imitate what the makeup artists do yeah so the next thing if you want to dodge now where do you dodge i think that would be the next question i'll use uh think to represent where you dodge now dodge is about emphasizing highlights you know sometimes now there you dodge you dodge around that area you dodge around the cheekbone you dodge around there you know then you dodge around the forehead you dodge around that the nose tip area a little bit but this don't not so much over this particular area otherwise it would make the nose so big just a little bit of there you know all these parts can be dodged so i think this one really gives you a good guide of how to do your burning and dodging i'll just delete this but hope it has given you some enlightenment so the, the next thing we're going to do now we're going to dodge yeah so dodging you just come and still oops the brush is so heavy so we're going to reduce the opacity here put it at around uh, i think this this is a question of test of what opacity and flow to use so the first thing i usually do is just come and emphasize the nose contour just press the dodge just like that then i just come with a big brush and emphasize the highlights let us put on our black and white help layer for for guides like that then a big brush a little emphasis to the forehead a little emphasis to the eyeshadow you know like that 
basically I would say the, the lighting was so beautiful there is not really a lot to dodge but at least you get the feel of what I'm talking about you know now guys let us group all this and uh, I'll just delete this let us put this in a group and we look at our before and after shot you know that is the before and that is the after guys that is how they do professional skin retouching look at the before and look at the after before and after before and after basically we have retained the texture we've just put the tones right and enhanced the makeup in the next tutorial guys be sure to subscribe i'm going to show you how to edit hair how to make this hair look neat and how to match skin color in a particular image stay don't leave this channel turn on notifications i hope to see you in my next tutorial and adios